All right, so your PC build just sold and now it's time to safely ship it over to your customer. My name is Zach and as a PC building YouTuber that has sold hundreds of builds at this point, I've kind of become an expert on how to safely do it and also how to do it without breaking the bank. Let's get started. First up, just in case it's not obvious to everyone, I wanna real quickly highlight why safely shipping your PC should be a top priority to you, and the numbers for this are actually pretty shocking. Let's say, for example, it costs $30 to ship a PC to your customer, but then when they get the PC, they realize that a component broke or needs repaired during shipping. You not only have to fix or replace that component, but you also have to spend $30 to ship it from your customer back to you, and then another $30 to ship it from you back to your customer. As a PC flipper, that extra $60 could be close to your entire profit margin of the build alone, so you really want to focus on minimizing these situations as much as possible. Jawa does offer shipping insurance, which could certainly help, but we all know at this point that some of those processes can be a huge pain and sometimes they take forever. It'll definitely help, but we really want to try to avoid using that as much as possible. Some penny pinchers may try to tell you that you can get away with not including Instapack expanding foam or extra shipping material in the case box, but don't let that nonsense fool you. You. It's always worth it to spend a few extra bucks up front and only slightly cut into your margins versus having a bigger mishap that could make you go negative on the project. All right, so for tip number one, the number one priority that you need to do is to make sure that nothing inside the actual case itself is moving, and you can do that by using some expanding foam like this one from Instapack. Over the years, I personally like to use these number 10 size bags that cost a few bucks, and they do a great job of securing your CPU cooler, graphics card, maybe an AIO, and really everything that's inside the main part of your case. Using Instapack like this is super simple. All you gotta do is push down either side a couple of times to make sure it mixes together, and then quickly lay the bag out inside the case, and then install the side panel as it starts expanding. Within a few seconds, that foam will be fully expanded and custom fit to the internals of your build, and everything should be nice and secure. Now, you could possibly get away without doing this if you don't have a tall CPU cooler, or if you don't have a dedicated graphics card. If you're shipping a PC build that just has like a Ryzen APU in there with just that Ryzen stock cooler, you should be perfectly fine, but there's definitely nothing wrong with being extra safe. I would use an Instapack on every build personally. Moving on to the next tip, it's really important to make sure that your build is properly cable managed and not just the front for aesthetics, but also somewhat decently in the back to make sure that nothing comes disconnected during the shipping process. Even if you're like me and you don't wanna spend a ton of time cable managing the back of your PC, you at least need to make sure that everything is really secure and definitely be on the lookout for those connectors that can become easily undone, like RGB connectors on an RGB hub. Connections like this are often super easy to unplug Plug, and that will absolutely happen during shipping. So it's a good idea to secure all of these types of cables to try to minimize the amount of room that cables have to wiggle around. Obviously an RGB connector becoming undone during shipping isn't the end of the world, but you wanna minimize as many issues as possible when that buyer first fires up the PC for the first time. And it's also not fun to troubleshoot things like that over the phone, especially if the buyer doesn't know anything about building gaming PCs. All right, so now that we have the internals of the PC covered, both the front and the back, now it's time to focus on packing up that PC and the first thing that's honestly mandatory in my book is to use the original case box that it came with. These case boxes always come with a perfectly molded and pre-cut foam cutout to keep your PC as secure as possible, and trying to build your own like this is really risky and shouldn't be attempted if you can help it. I know it's annoying to keep huge case boxes around, especially if you're selling a good amount of PCs, but it's absolutely a critical step because the best thing that you can do to minimize shipping mishaps is to try to keep everything as still as possible when the shipping company is throwing it around, and that's exactly what what the stock case box does. Now for the fourth tip, not only do I recommend using that original case box, but I think you should also beef it up a bit and add some extra packing material in there as well. You don't have to go crazy with this one, and honestly, you probably don't need to buy anything extra either. Using packing bubbles and material from places like Amazon or wherever you're buying things online should be perfectly fine. I actually just keep a huge trash bag and just keep piling in more and more packing material, and then whenever I go to sell my builds, I have all of that to use, and that's perfectly fine and it'll save you some money. I would specifically slide all the material on both sides of the PC build, especially on the temper glass side, as case boxes usually aren't protected at all over here because remember, you want to minimize internal movement during shipping as much as you can. Now if you do those four things, you're going to be off to a great start, and I've sold a ton of builds just like that with minimal issues, but if you want to throw a few extra dollars into the mix, it's definitely going to be worth it. Let me show you how. First, if you aren't going to be double boxing, which we'll talk about in just a second, 
I would highly recommend buying these plastic shipping corners and taping them onto all eight corners of your build. Use a long strip of tape, that way they don't easily become undone by the way. Not only will it be clearly visible to your customer that you're going the extra mile and really trying to secure their package, but I've personally seen really great results when using these because these corners take a brute of the force if the PC is dropped or thrown by the shipping company. And of course the other way to do that is to just use a double box, but over time that can definitely cost a little bit of extra money. In order for a double box to be successful, you'll have to find or buy one that's obviously just a bit bigger than your original case box and then stuff as much packing material in there as possible to minimize the movement of the case box. If you buy a second box but don't jam pack it in there, then the internal box, the original case box, is just going to rattle around in there and that's the exact opposite thing that we're trying to do. Double boxing is always worth it, but only if you do it right with a proper amount of packing material and if it's properly sized. And finally, the last tip that I highly recommend doing is prepare both yourself and the customer as much as possible for a shipping claim if that's needed. I would definitely always recommend that you ensure your PC builds first, which you can easily do straight through Java, but then you also want to make sure that you have a successful insurance claim if you have to use it. Make sure the customer knows not to throw away any of the packing material in case they have to ship it back to you and make sure that they aren't trying to fix anything themselves before proper pictures are taken of the damage. When filing a claim, sometimes you'll have to send over a ton of information and pictures and whatnot. It's a really good idea to send an email or a warning to the customer not to throw anything away whenever they receive their PC. Well, that was a quick list of all the things that I recommend you do to ensure a successful safe shipment from your PC build to the customer. And obviously these concepts can be applied to anything that you're selling on Java, but if you need any more help in how to do all of this, feel free to join us over in the Jawa Discord server. I'll see you over there.